Hello students. We're going to have a look at this pamphlet today. And we're going to learn some things about being vegan. But we're also going to check on the baby birds under my porch. Look. Do you see them? Look at them. Aren't they adorable? Hi, little sweetie pies. They just came out of their eggs. Their mama has gone to look for some food. I'm so happy to have the birds back. Every year they come and they build a little nest under my porch. And this time the nest is on a different side. But it's such a joy to see them and I was so afraid yesterday when it actually was so cold and it was snowing here. So this is good to see that they're okay. So we're gonna come back and see our little guys later. They came out of some little blue eggs, by the way, for those of you just joining us. And they are robins. So let's go over here and let's look at this little pamphlet here. So we're gonna talk about why it's important to be vegan. So of course, how we eat is affecting the environment. Climate change in you. What's really worth our time? Can one person even make a difference? As the clock keeps ticking on climate change, with no action from the federal government in sight, these questions are more important than ever. Luckily, there's one area where our individual choices make a concrete difference, food. Keep reading and see why making a small change in our diet is one of the most powerful ways we can help everything from climate change to species extinction to air and water pollution. There's one sector of the food system that has an outsized environmental impact, animal agriculture. Most of the problem stems from the sheer number of animals we raise to kill for meat, eggs, and milk every year in the United States. And I am in Canada, and the same thing applies here as it does to almost all countries in the world. Do you know what that is? Rate <laughs> yourself. Nine billion, there are over nine billion, billion, not million, billion, land animals bred, that means forced into existence, that means raped, and slaughtered, that means murdered, and this is just in the USA, annually, in the US, annually for food. That means there are more farmed animals raised every year in the US than there are people on the entire planet. Just think about that. More animals are killed just in the US than there are people on the entire planet. Raising all these animals produces 200 pounds of meat per person in the US every year, but it also causes a lot of problems. Most of the problems come from the fact that all those animals eat, drink, burp, and poop. I know that probably sounds funny to you kids, but it's the truth. It causes a lot of pollution. Growing food for animals, not people. When we think of the farmers growing crops, we imagine food for people. However, 75% of all agricultural land around the world is used for livestock production. That means for chickens, cows, pigs. Imagine someone offered you an investment opportunity. You invest $100 and you only get $40 back. That's a bad deal, right? But that's exactly what we're doing with our food system. For every 100 grams of protein we put into feeding animals raised, for food, we get back only 40 grams of protein from chickens, 10 grams of protein from pork, and just five grams of protein from beef. And beef is a cow. This is a colossal waste of resources. In fact, if we cut global meat consumption in half, 
and used all of that farmland to grow fruits and veggies for people to eat directly instead of growing corn and soy to feed animals on factory farms, we could feed every single person on earth today plus an extra two billion people. We just need to eat more efficiently by eating lower on the food chain. Let's check on the birds again here. Christ, they're just so cute. Hi, little guys. Look at them. Look at them. They're so fragile. Oh, just little teeny tiny feathers. And you guys will see how quickly they grow. They get so big so fast. <laughs> and they start to open their beaks when mama comes. It's the cutest thing. How can anyone hurt animals? How can anybody hurt little baby birds? Oh, little cuties. look again here at our book. Animal agriculture is one of the leading causes of deforestation worldwide and cattle ranching can be linked to 65% of deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. Deforestation. Producing animal products takes up a lot of land. In fact, over a quarter of all arable land around the world is being used to raise livestock. This is one of the leading causes of deforestation. It's particularly bad in the Amazon rainforest where 65% of the Amazon deforestation is to make grazing land for beef cattle or land to grow <clears throat> corn and soy for animals on factory farms. Since meat production is a leading cause of deforestation and habitat destruction, it's also a leading cause of wildlife extinction. Remember, the Amazon rainforest is like the lungs of the earth. We get so much oxygen from there. Think grass-fed is better? Think again. Now, I'm thinking right now, here in Canada, there are some commercials for a restaurant, a fast food chain called A&W, and they're always saying, oh, our beef is grass-fed. And they make it sound like it's good, but it's not. Habit destruction for ranching is a problem in the U.S. as well. According to the Center for Biodiversity, there are currently 175 threatened or endangered species on U.S. public lands that are further threatened by the presence of livestock. To make matters worse, USDA Wildlife Services killed 2.7 million animals in 2016, mostly for the benefit of ranchers. This include predators like bears and endangered gray wolves, as well as ground squirrels and birds. GMOs and pesticides. I'm not going to read this section. This is a pamphlet that you can get by yourself. Um, but for now, I'm just going to look and show you just a basic overall of the rest. Drought got you down? You can save the same amount of water by skipping one gallon of milk or 27 showers. So if you want to save water, it's much better if you drink plant milks. Here's some more information about water. Here's some more information about manure runoff from factory farms. It's a leading cause of water pollution in the US, having polluted 35,000 miles of river in 22 states. It's not the cow's fault. They were bred into existence. They shouldn't even be here, these cows. And we put animals into a lifetime of misery just so that we can murder them at the end. Instead, why not just eat plants? It's so much healthier. There's so much pollution involved. Per year, switching to a vegan diet saves 219,000 gallons of water, prevents the release of 100 of 1,533 pounds of CO2, and spares the suffering of 35 animals per year. 
switching to a vegan diet. Of course, it depends how many animals. If you eat lots and lots of chicken, it's even more, right? Think of it when you get a bucket of chicken legs, how much chicken is on your plate? Each chicken has two legs. It's very sad. And I feel bad because I too used to eat chicken wings. I regret it. If I could go back, I wish I could be vegan earlier, much sooner. Almost every vegan says that. So what can I do? Eat less meat. Look, here's a vegan burger. Veggie burgers are easy to buy. You can also have vegan pizzas, vegan pancakes. You can have Beyond Meat. These are Beyond Burgers. I have these in my fridge right now. You can also buy these products by Gardein. You can find these in the freezer. There's all kinds of different menu ideas, uh, recipes that you can find online. Just online, just Google vegan recipes, healthy vegan recipes. Look at all these different products. Go to your grocery store and ask, where are the vegan products? But of course, you know what they really are. Veggies, fruits, nuts, and seeds. Look at this. This is probably some kind of a bean burger. Delicious, put some avocado on there. Here's a nice tomato soup. Most breads are vegan, and you can also make your own vegan pizza. Get some vegan cheese to put on there. Of course, you know peanut butter is vegan, and peanut butter has four grams of protein per tablespoon. That's also amazing. You can get vegan hot dogs. Everything that you eat normally can be veganized. Use firm tofu as a meat replacer. You just cut some slices up, marinate them in some delicious sauces and spices. Makes all the difference. The sauces and the spices, guys. That's what makes it great. Eating out, look at these traditional meals. You can get pasta. You can absolutely get it with sauce that has no meat. Don't put any cheese on it unless you bring your own. That, or, or maybe your restaurant does have vegan cheese, you can ask for it. Don't forget, always ask for vegan products every time you go to a restaurant, even if you know they're not on the meal, on the menu, I mean. Ask anyway, tell the waiter you want them. Talk to the chef, talk to the manager, talk to the owner and say, you guys, I wish you had more vegan options here. Here's some a Thai meal, Middle Eastern, Indian. Get some Indian spices, guys. Curry and cumin, yum, makes everything taste so good. Mexican, Chinese. You see, cultures all over the world are vegan. Must we eat animals? Absolutely not. Definitely not, you do not need to. Look at this pizza. So delicious. All right, so um, ensure optimal nutrition. A daily multivitamin with a vitamin B12 will cover most of your bases. For calcium, eat plenty of dark leafy green vegetables, especially kale and collards. Oranges or calcium fortified non-dairy milks and orange juice. For iron, eat greens, beans, or oatmeal with a source of vitamin C, which significantly increases iron absorption. Okay, remember that. When you have vitamin C, with things that to do with iron, the iron gets absorbed better. Here we have more plants and protein ideas. Don't forget to buy soy milk. I buy this brand, I buy all kinds of different brands. And here's a quote from Dr. Greger. As a medical doctor, I consider adopting a plant-based diet to be one of the most important things someone can do to prevent leading causes of disease. That's Dr. Michael Greger. And here's another doctor, Dr. Kim. A. Williams, former president of the American College of Cardiology. I recommend a plant-based diet to my patients because I know it's going to lower their blood pressure, improve their insulin sensitivity, and decrease their cholesterol. And lastly, look, the position of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics up states that an appropriately planned vegetarian, including vegan, including vegan diets are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. These diets are appropriate for all stages of life, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescence, older adulthood, and for athletes. You see that? Anyone can be vegan, guys. So thanks for listening today. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please do so. 
and press the little bell so you will be there with me to do some uh, premieres. I like to talk to you guys and see you in the comment section. And stay tuned. We're going to be keeping an eye on these little baby birds as they grow a little bit more each day. Soon on the screen you will see some other videos popping up. If you haven't seen them yet, click on them. Be curious. Check around my site. There's lots and lots of different material, lots of things to learn, lots of different interviews I've done with people, and I have also reviewed other people's channels. Thanks again for watching. If you're vegan, you're awesome. If you're not that vegan, keep trying. Stay with me. You can totally do this. Take care. Bye for now. Do 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 do.